all right, the saying goes, you know, you only have one life. Make sure you live it with intention. So time now for One Less One Day with our spiritual coach, Michelle Barr. We're going to focus on that. We're going to focus on our intentions and on our counter intentions. So Michelle, hello to you. Happy Wellness Wednesday. Hello. Hey, yeah, it's I always love... a great Wellness Wednesday. We're ketchup and mustard today. <laughs> red and yes, yellow. Yes, we I love are. It. Uh, okay, so I mean, I think everybody knows. Sometimes you can that saying you can be your own worst enemy. You can sabotage your own intentions. Marielle and I talk a lot about manifestation and putting positivity out there. So I want to talk a little bit about that. When it comes to setting your own intentions, what's the biggest thing that gets in the way? It's really these counter intentions to be aware of because we're told set a powerful intention and then we know where we're going, we know what we're wanting. And what gets in the way the most is those things that we're not always conscious of. Those counter intentions, they're hidden, they're patterns, they're habits. And so we're not always aware, but then afterwards you go, why didn't I do that thing I knew I needed to do? Or why did I just do that thing that I told myself I wouldn't do again? But when I think about the word counter intention, so for me, what, what does that mean? Because I can speak for myself personally. It's really just, um, I guess my counter intentions could be personified like as a perfectionist voice in my head, right? Like that's what's going on in my mind that keeps me uh, not present. And so I'm always maybe trying, you know, I don't mean to self-sabotage by trying to think of how I could do something better, but that's what happens for me. So what does counterintention really mean? How does it look for different people? That's a great example of that. It is because we have our desires, which are true, which we set intentions towards. Our counter intentions are those unmet needs and those hidden needs. And they can be, you're not going to do it well enough. You mm -hmm. shouldn't even try it. You can't have this. You can't do this. Or I need this to be perfect. That's a great one because then you will just keep running that and you won't do it until you know you can do it it perfect. Yeah, it's like the limiting beliefs, right? The all or nothing thinking, the black and white thinking where if I can't do it a little bit, if I can't work out for an hour and a half, I'm not working out at all, which certainly we know there's a, a lot right. of time in between. So how do we challenge those? How do you set new pathways in your brain to really set those intentions without sabotaging them? Again, it's creating this awareness. So we're talking about it. And then it is really pushing through, learning those limiting beliefs, pushing through, but doing it anyway, getting over the fear, getting over those uncomfortable feelings. And one thing I've learned is I've had to get really comfortable at being uncomfortable. When mm -hmm. you feel uncomfortable, it's just because you're pushing to your edge and you're pushing beyond that. So you want to regroup and come back to your intention and look at anywhere that you are getting in your own way and being really honest about that. And it's working on your mindset. Yeah, I mean, it sounds so much easier said than done, but honestly, it can start with just the smallest thing, right? Just every day, just moving moment by moment. What suggestions do you have for people who might, you know, those mental blocks just come in and trying to set a new pathway, trying to go left when you've been going right for 20 years can be really, really challenging. What's the smallest first step? It's just like you said, the power is always in the now. So one of the things is you don't want to go back and beat yourself up and self-doubt about anything you did or that you just did. In this moment, you can choose new and you can be new and you can recognize what you did and then you can give yourself grace so you're not mm. using more energy feeling bad about what you did. So it's catching yourself in the moment. What choice do I have right now? And every choice I make is either moving me toward or away from what I want. So what choice am I making in this moment? When I know better, I can do better. And it's really chunking it down. Again, like you said, it's not all or nothing thinking, well, I messed that up, so I guess I'm just done. It's okay, I had a misstep, but what can I do now to turn that around and just taking it in the moment, in the day? I can't tell you how much that resonates with me. My mom always says, don't let uh, perfect be the enemy of the good. So be good enough. You yes. don't have to work, as on, work on being perfect all the time and, and uh, you know, just take it one, one step at a time. 
Yes, that's great. Thank you. Well, Michelle, thank you so much. You can follow Michelle Barr, uh, of course, at her website, www.michellebarr.com. Uh, have a happy Wednesday. Thank you so much. And don't go anywhere, you guys. We're coming right back. It's the noon.